So we're going to start off with the very beginning of this whole process and uh, I'm going to show you guys how I use Corel Draw to set up a mask. I'm going to show you a couple different options and how to set up a file from Photograph. Um, so you can basically do the layout um, in a vinyl mask, low tack mask on your surface. And uh, a lot of people say, well, you know, I'd probably use a projector or something like that. You know, you can, um, you know, get a good LCD or an LED projector, you'd probably be okay. But I like to do this because there might be a chance that, you know, in the next year or two, somebody else will see this guitar and want something like that. So I'll have the file done and I'll simply be able to recut a mask. So that's, that's my reasoning behind spending the time to do this. On top of this, on top of that, actually, having the design... Uh, available to recut in a mask if you're using a specific part of the geometry uh, in an image you can just go ahead and uh, recut that section of file so you don't ever have to use a mask or a razor blade on the surface I'm really really big on not cutting on a surface when you're painting it I uh, try not to at all costs there are some instances when you when you do, but I use the FBS yellow tape. So I use this uh, tape here. It's really thin with a fresh blade. Um, you can get through it rather quick. You can see a lot of the design through it. As you can see on the computer screen here, you can see the image through it. So it's really handy uh, material for having to cut uh, any sort of design work out. I strongly recommend it. They make it in wider rolls than this. I think they have four and six now. But... Um, so if you're not using a computer mask, um, another thing you could do to set this up is to lay it in tape. You could print this out to size on a printer, which um, on a regular printer is probably going to take two or three sheets, maybe four. And then uh, doing a lead, basically, uh, overlay on the backside, taking your pencil and uh, rubbing out the backside. And then you can come back in and trace the image onto your surface. Uh, a lot of guys do it that way too, but again, I have my reasons for doing it. The way I do. A lot of people simply don't do it because they're not that familiar with uh, Corel Draw or Illustrator. Now I have used both, but I prefer Corel Draw uh, for the most part. They're making it more and more difficult these days. Now they've got it on the cloud. I don't like having my software on the cloud personally. I like to have CDs. So I'm still using an X3 version, which is probably, I don't know, nine, eight, nine years old maybe. It's pretty old. But it still works with the operating system I have here. I have no problems with it. It has a lot of flexibility. So let's uh, let's get into this, and I'll show you guys what I'm going to do. So first one I'm going to do is I'm going to work on the pinhead image. You can see from my mock-up here that I have, you know, this pretty much the scale. Um, and let me check on that. So I know that this body is 12 and a half inches high. What I'll do is come down here. I'll measure a square in there. It tells me it's... 11.92, so it's right on the mark. I can make it a little bit bigger. Now this graphic is going to kind of wrap around the edges, so I'm not I'm not going to tape it off or anything. I'm going to do what I need to do. So all I do is just come in here, grab this image. I'll leave the other one intact so I can have my placement. And I'm just going to go down here and focus on that. First thing you can do is say, okay, how much time do I want to spend redrawing this? What am I going to draw as the elements? I think the biggest thing that needs to be um, dealt with on this is the, personally is the likeness, but secondly is all the little pins uh, around the head and the geometry and the sense of perspective that they all have. So I'm going to show you a couple of different ways. One of them might be kind of lengthy and take some time, but in the end the results will be worth it. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to take this image, I'm going to duplicate it one more time, and then I'm going to go in on it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here and edit the bitmap. First thing this does is it exports it to Corel Photo Paint, which is much like Adobe Photoshop. And uh, we don't need all this color to do anything at all with the vinyl machine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust a couple settings here first. I'm going to come in here. I'm going to do a brightness and a contrast adjustment just to kind of see what holds, what doesn't. You can start to see immediately the darker areas around the facial features. Um, they hold up really nice, enough that I can get in there and uh, capture a likeness on it. Now, 
What I'm going to do next, or actually before I do any adjustments, is I'm actually going to take this and I'm going to turn it into a grayscale. All right. I'm going to zoom in on these features, and then I'm going to come up here and I'm going to do an adjust, brightness, contrast. Now you can see instantly a lot less things to deal with because you're not dealing with the colors. Um, you can mess with these settings here to try to get as much of this in as possible. Brightness, intensity, and then uh, bring the brightness up a little bit. Let's bring the intensity up a little bit more. And then the contrast we can adjust. Now right there, that's not too bad. Now let's, let's take a look at what happens. You can see right here in the forehead, it's going to interpret a lot of this uh, as one big black mass. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go convert to black and white and we can kind of see what's going to happen here. I want your settings to be line art. And then I'm going to back out on it and take a look at it. You can see it gives you a little bit of a preview. That's not too bad, but the thing that it begins to do is just over complicates a lot of this stuff with the pixelation and depending on the resolution of the image that you have. So let's do two things here so we can have a reference from both standpoints. All I'm going to do now is I'm going to hit convert to black and white and then I'm going to save the image. And that's going to go back to Corel Draw and it's going to actually change that the image and the adjustments that you made to that image inside of Corel Draw. Now in Corel and also in Photoshop and Diana will have to intervene anytime I'm, I'm mentioning uh, Photoshop and Adobe because she's uh, much more of a user on that platform than I am. You mean but Illustrator? Illustrator and Photoshop. Okay. So they have an auto trace uh, here in Corel Draw. You can see where it says trace bitmap and it'll allow you to trace it however you want. We're going to do a line art and what you can do is you can zoom in on it. I'm going to make sure I have it set for black and white right here and it's basically two colors on there so it's just black and white and it looks kind of funky right now but um, I'm going to go with it and then what I'll do is I'll convert that to a uh, line drawing. I'll get rid of all the fill on there and then I'm going to simply whoa what the hell happened there well, it disappeared I must have crashed it so let's do it this way that's there I'm just going to put a black outline on it, it took a little while for it to sample so these are all the uh, the marks that we have now I could do the the needles and I could probably get by with this as a reference um, which I probably could just come back in and redraw the uh, the needles, but I was really hoping to take those needles and actually um, isolate them individually. So what I can do is just come in here and start drawing one needle and go on top of the file here. And let's just start with one. And all I'm going to do is just duplicate this particular. I'm going to also work in uh, gray or the view screen. We're going to go um, wireframe, <clears throat> and what that does is uh, allows us just to see the, the lines clear. Man, my throat is killing me today. <clears throat> so now I'm <clears throat> just basically going to draw one of these little pins, and then I'm going to do a, a weld. So I'm going to click on that first object. I'm going to shift and I'm going to hold down and select the second object. You can see down here it's saying two objects selected. So it lets you know you have both of them selected. If you're selecting more than two, you have multiple. You know how many there are. It's easy to make sure you got them all. I'm going to go up here. I'm going to hit the weld button. And what that does is basically isolates these two objects and turns them into one continuous path. Now I could do a fill on this. It's not really necessary. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to start duplicating this and I'm going to probably have to jump out periodically back to um, enhanced mode so I can see where these ones end. But I'm going to use my better judgment on this stuff uh, and just try to get them to appear the way I, I think they would be. 
So I'm going to go back to view, wireframe. And then I'm going to just take this. I'm going to hit control D, which is the shortcut uh, for duplication. And I'm just going to come down here and start duplicating these things, getting them in place. I can rotate them as I need to. I can stretch them as I want. They're not going to be perfectly uniform. I think that the fact that they have some irregularity to them is, is not a bad thing. It makes it look a little bit more natural, especially when you're dealing with uh, these types of, uh, I guess, random images and duplication of them. I'm going to just get rid of a couple nodes on this and change this one. You know, move these things around a little bit. That Now I have basically um, four unique little pins that I can start with as far as uh, duplication. <clears throat> so now I'm just going to keep going around using my selector tool, duplicating, and then morphing and it's kind of rotating around into position. And I'll do the same here to control D and I'll start bringing them up into the intersections that you see here. And then I'll do the intersection. What I'll do is I'll take a composite of the first thing that we did um, with the mask doing an auto trace. And what I'll do is I'll do an overlay uh, with the items that I'm actually hand drawing. And then I can get the best, of, the best of both worlds in that regards to uh, having access to the ones that I want to be really tight. Uh, this is going to be a pretty complicated masking system, but and can you imagine hand cutting all this out? Even doing freehand, I mean, it can be done. You could use some loose shields here and there, but uh, this is really going to make a big difference on this particular uh, paint job. And I think it's really one of the reasons that I've been doing it like this for so long is to have that flexibility um, to have the mask ahead of me. But also, while I'm looking at this, I'm no noticing these rows. And these things aren't lined up perfectly. You see, they're kind of skewed to one side. Obviously, he's not that great of a groomer. But this will work. Now I can just come up here, bring some of that, take this one, rotate it back around. And Do you think he puts the pins in differently to make like different hairdos? On different days? I, I think you could. I think you could give Pinhead more of a, a mohawk. A mohawk? That's what I'm thinking. A mohawk one day, but obviously that wouldn't be uh, true to the film, so right. we won't be doing that. Now, another thing, too, rather than just stretching, you can actually take your node edit tool and you can just kind of grab these points, move them around, which is another good way to do it. So oftentimes there's <clears throat> many ways to do things on the computer um, that will allow you to get the you know, same results. Now, one thing I could also do is establish one side of the head here and basically copy it and then flip it over and put it on the other side which will give a shot that way I've got everything pretty close to some symmetry and that will also allow me to um, go in there and just move them around to fit so they don't look perfectly symmetrical I you know that isn't what I want I don't think that's gonna look natural so gonna do this natural yes yes it's supernatural <laughs> isn't gonna look supernatural now the one thing also is like this particular design um, the graphic kind of pops up um, the head will actually go into the top shoulder of the guitar so I don't have to get too carried away up here but you can see you can just grab these things spin them around drag them back down into place and it's starting to have a, a really nice natural look I could use the uh, the pinpoints where they go into the head as a, a map guide for my horizontal column of lateral lines that going around like this, longitudinal. And you can uh, pencil that in. And I don't think I'm going to feel the need necessarily to mask these off. I think it's going to look better freehanded to have these. The really thing I want to feature these pins having a very rigid metal-like uh, look to them and most of that's going to be accomplished simply by the way in which we mask them off and keeping things nice and tightly registered. Now I can't really play any music. I could play some LOD or you could play some LOD since I own the rights to that music and we can kind of keep it low and maybe have a little tunage going on in the background. You can go to... How would I do that? 
go to YouTube. Oh. And then let's see. So I'm gonna. What I'm gonna do here is I am going to show you guys how to maybe accomplish this with some mirroring. And uh, what I'm gonna do is just develop this side, which I'm pretty close, and I'm gonna have to go down the cheek and all that fun stuff. There's a lot of a lot of needles and pins through here. So pins and needles. We're all walking on them these days. Uh, duplicate this one, I'm gonna bring him down. Now the photograph's been manipulated to such that a lot of the details are hard to decipher. And you'll get that in a lot of cases where people hand you like really shitty family photos and uh, they ask you to do a likeness, I'm sure. Uh, Airbrush Goddess could relate to that. And she was just appearing on people's court for a lack of likeness in one of her paint jobs she had done but the customer I mean gave her a really crappy photo so you'll have to deal with that and it's always great to have good resource and references and um, you know get what you can but if not if you can't find what you want then you really have to kind of do your best guess on it making sure that um, you're going to get the information that you need as an artist in order to provide uh, the best uh, reproduction and likeness. So, this being somewhat of a uh, cult character, he does require the attention. Um, in particular, this the actor, uh, I think his name was Ed, um, God, what was his name? But anyways, fails, fails me right now, but obviously, you if you were to see this guy, um, without the makeup, you would instantly recognize him. There would be no doubt about that. So as I'm working with this here, I'm also zooming in and out. I'm doing that simply on my mouse uh, with this little middle wheel here, the zoom wheel. And that allows me, without having to come back in and hit the button off to the left-hand side menu, and I can just zoom in as I want. Now there's a pin right here in the middle. There's And these ones right here, you almost, they're foreshortened, so all your really seeing is the the top of the pinhead on this and then um, I will draw those last they will probably just be a series of ellipses and circles so I'm just gonna keep moving on here and you can see there's really no need to sit there and hand draw all this stuff uh, you, know, you would first look at this and think oh my god who wants to sit there and hand draw these but uh, working smarter and not harder is the, is the name of my plan and uh, I'm just using duplication and I'm sure that if the last thing you're going to notice is that uh, it, it was duplicated because they're all going to be manipulated in some way, shape, or form. Um, sometimes you can skew them. Like right here, I'm skewing them rather than rotating. Like if you grab this axis, you can rotate it. But if you grab it here on these middle ones, you can actually skew the object. So some of them are skewed. Some of them are rotated. I'm doing artwork. I like to think that um, the... Uh, the reason this stuff of these items that we're going to be defined. Um, so the first album we'll go through. And just for everybody on YouTube, I own the rights to this music. <laughs> it's mine. Don't shut me down. Let me turn it down a little bit if you want. All right, so now we got the... Uh, everything's kind of lining up. And, oh, what I was messing with when I was talking about was the environment of these very rigid objects inside an environment uh, that's rather soft around it. They complement each other just as uh, white and black in a value sense and contrast complement each other. So that's another thing. You know, you wouldn't want to hand cut all these. Trust me, I, I wouldn't. You could do it freehand, and I'm not saying people can't and, and shouldn't. I'm just saying there's a reason why I do it uh, this way, and uh, I'm trying to explain that or justify that, I guess. Saying, why is he doing all this work? Why is he doing all this work, Mike? <laughs> right. All right. Is anybody got any questions? I don't know. I got ten people watching. They're probably sleeping already. But we're gonna we're gonna go forward with this. Eventually, it'll it'll become a good resource for people who are gonna watch the video. 
So now I've got all these objects selected. Notice I haven't done the middle row. I'm going to copy. And actually, I'm just going to go over here. I'm just going to go apply to duplicate. And I'm going to copy a whole other set. And because there is a certain amount of symmetry just on the basic layout, what I'm going to do is leave those center points intact. And then I'm going to move these around just a little bit to bust up that, uh, I guess, unavoidable sense of symmetry. So I'm just going to kind of zoom in here a little bit. And then I'm going to come in and move some of these things around so it don't look like I just simply copied and pasted it, which I did. But I don't want it to look like that. So I, mean, I don't want the end results of the painting to be that. But rather than sit and move the things across the, the screen to fit or accommodate uh, what I'm trying to do here, I'm just trying to maximize my time efficiently. Because this could turn into a burdensome layout if you let it and uh, take some time. But with the technology we have, there's a million ways to do these things. And uh, I'm going to take advantage of every single one of them that I have to do as such. And I'm going to bring this one, duplicate it, move it over. Okay. All right, and then I got this. And I just kind of look around the perimeter here. I'm going to start moving these around. So what I'm going to use is the, uh, the node edit tool. Kind of bring some around. I'm going to grab them one at a time, and I'm going to pull them, pull them around. Of course, some of them aren't there, so I'll delete a few here and there, and then I'll, you know what I should do? Just kind of pull that one off the side. So I'm just going to pull this over here, just get it out of the way. This one here, I'm going to move up into that area. This one will go back here, and we'll rotate that, and then bring it into the forehead a little bit. Move this one up. Now there's a difference between your object selector, your pick tool, and then your shape tool. The shape tool I also refer to as the node selection tool. And the nodes are the points uh, along this. And I'll kind of show you. When I pick on the, uh, so that selector tool, you can see that there's little squares here. And those are called nodes. For those of you who haven't really messed with any of these uh, newfangled vector programs. And then uh, I'm going to take this, move this one over here. I'm going to zoom in on this and change this. Now, it's not really taking that long. The thing that, uh, like I said, we can, we're going to show you a couple different options and hopefully give you, you know, some something to think about when you are wanting to step into learning some vector programs and possibly purchasing a plotter. I will tell you that that plotter has paid for itself thousands of times over uh, with the work that I do. So many different ways, uh, especially... You know, anything that you've got to do multiples of. And when I get into Grateful Dead guitar season, it, it's, it's a godsend. I'd never make any money if I didn't have that plotter. And lately I've been using a lot of that for camo patterns and uh, stuff like that on the guns I've been painting. So it's uh, been cool for that too. You can see I'm just kind of lining these things up here. So where this intersection, this line comes across the cheek. The one comes down from the eye orbit down into the jawbone. Right there where they intersect, that's where that pin's going. So I'm making sure that I'm staying true to that particular geometry. Um, and then the needles will just kind of skew. And the only points I'm really concerned about are these ones right here, where it intersects into that line. So I pull this over here like that. This will go down there.
So I'm fortunate that I have been in bands that have recorded music and I can actually play music legally on my uh, YouTube. We'll play some Damien Steele cuts and both the albums off of uh, Lords of Distortion. Also, you can deal with the size, the perspective as it's going around. The ones in the, fact, in the back there, as they wrap around the side of the head, I'll start to make just a little smaller, and that'll help create that illusion of perspective. Um, let's see, we need to get... I think he's got some in his lips there, too. Yeah. I'm going to move this one over just a little bit. Get a point right there. All right, so if I zoom back on this now, you can see what I got. Now when I first look at this, the first thing I notice is that I have this symmetry down these two rows. I am going to change that up right now. I'm going to do what I need to do to make that all happen. And again, I mentioned earlier, the top of the head kind of falls off the side of the guitar here, so I'll just go ahead and move this. I tell you, it's so nice to do these videos and not have to pay for them. It's one thing that's nice about Facebook. <laughs> I'm zooming in and out. And this thing's, you know, surprisingly, they're kind of symmetrical. I, mean, I don't know if they did it. This is definitely a photograph of the original paint job, the mask. All right, so. I'm going to move these around a little bit more. You know, I'm going to try to get as close as I can, but I'm not going to spend... I'm not going to OCD out on this. I'll save that for something else. When I start painting, and I'll get a little bit more OCD. Here we go. Now, the last ones i got to do, the ones down the middle. These ones are the ones that are going to receive the most foreshortening. So, take this, duplicate slide it over all right and I'm gonna just duplicate that everybody sleeping yet I wonder why he didn't go cross-eyed with those ones that are like coming out of the side of his nose mm -hmm. that's uh, I'm obsessing about that right now all right so right here I'm kind of getting into an extreme foreshortening what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my circle and then I'm going to also take that circle and do that. I'm going to weld those two little objects together for this one. Looks like a cat. <laughs> All right. Yeah, it looks more like a cat than a pin. <laughs> but the shadows will. Um, make a difference with that. So the um, ones on the nose here are just going to be pin heads, literally. Nah. And then nah, nah, nah. one right on the tip of the nose. I don't know if he's got one on the tip of his nose it or not. Like I don't remember does, that. It does look like it's there, uh, though. I'm I looking. can't remember. I'll have to take some other reference photos just to look at it. But I'm going to put it there anyway. It'll give me a guide. There's one down right here too that's coming oh, like pins. underneath and going yeah. down in front of his lip. Like that. No, right here. Oh yeah, right there. Yeah. yeah. Now I'll bring this one over, rotate it. Yeah. That one's gonna be nice. Shorten too. it up a little bit. Whoops. <laughs> Control Z is your buddy. Control Z. All right, so the last ones we got right down here. I'll bring one. To, actually, let's take this one. All right, so we got the one there. That looks pretty complete to me. I think. Oh, I gotta put one. I gotta take this one here. same place and 
skew that one up just a little bit. All right, so now I have the pins all mapped out. And you can see that's pretty decent. It's, it is. I like it. Good oh, job. Thank you. Oh, Scott McKay looked it up for you. He does have one on the tip of his nose. Does he? Okay, <laughs> cool. All right, thanks, Scott. Appreciate that. <laughs> Alright, and then I'm just gonna lean this one over. And I think by the time I get up to here in this area, it's all gonna be cut out anyway. Alright, so now I have all this stuff done. All the pins. What I'm gonna do now is I am going to basically combine all these elements together. And I just simply come up here, hit the combine key there. And now this is all one object. I can move them all around simultaneously and have what I need at my hands. But what we're going to do here is we're going to integrate uh, some of the features here. I want to kind of see how this stuff overlays on there. Now, I, I'm already kind of looking at this thing and I don't think that's going to work for me. So, but I will show you the options and the instances uh, that it could work. Now, we do have quite a bit of complexity going on uh, with this particular image. It's very vague, but I guarantee you by the time you sprayed it, if we were to take this, just put a black square behind it, and then we'll take all these elements and we'll make them with a white fill. Then we'll go back out to view enhanced, put this in the background. So you can see already, I mean, just as simply as that can be done with a trace, it's going to give you enough guidance uh, to do what you need to do. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take some of the centered featured elements of this facial layout and I'm going to just move them over uh, or duplicate them. And then I will take all the elements of the pins and then combine the two together. So I'll be using a combination of the simply traced vector and the stuff that we took the time to draw. You can see I'm just eliminating these things one at a time. Now this is a completed path right here. So all I'm going to do is just come in here and separate these with the line segment tool. Whoops. Oh, I know. I'll take this one. Okay, I had the wrong one. Whoops. Okay. Right here. All right, I'm going to just cut this right here. And what that will do is break these two right in half. I'm going to zoom in a little closer. All right, now I can take this object, break it in two, and I can take just the top part and get rid of this lower part that I don't need. So I have the eyes and the mouth, basically what I'm going to use on this to get the layout. I like to keep it as simple as possible and then just come here and just sketch with a white stabilo and, and be able to move along a little faster. Just having the key kind of, uh, elements available is my goal. All right, so now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take these, I'm gonna slide them over to the image here. I'm gonna fill them. And take a look at really if it's working. I'm not really seeing enough there that's going to give me, I don't know, any real sense of resolve. So I'm just going to trash that idea and show you the second approach to this. Now I go back out to wireframe mode. And this takes a little bit more time, but it's often worth it, especially when you're dealing like with the eyes. And I'm just loosely going to kind of put this stuff together here. Bringing the whites of the eye, and I'm just going to kind of 
draw that around. Make sure you got closed paths when you're doing this stuff, it really helps. Especially if you're going to be dealing with traps and or trying to isolate particular shapes. Now I'm going to take the circle, the circle tool and just simply drag it over top of that previous shape of the white of the eye. And then I'm just going to trim it, trim it out of there. So it'll be gone, leaving, whoops. Okay, I see what's going on. This isn't closed. See, now that wasn't a closed path. So what I want to do is make sure that this is a closed path and make sure those two ends are connected. You can see right there where they kind of bypass each other. do is just simply drag this one on top of this one here now it will be a continued path closed path which will allow me to cleanly uh, do a, a trim out of this here now a couple of different ways you could have done that I'll show you the other way uh, one of the ways you could do it is with uh, the line segment tool a virtual segment right here and just get rid of these things one at a time you wanted to do that now the thing it won't do is treat this as one unified path it's going to treat you as remnants of the circle and remnants of this uh, part of the eye the whites of the eye so I don't necessarily want that and it would probably cut okay like that but if I was doing color fills or anything like that you got to know when you need to have a closed path and when you when it's not really needed so I'll just go ahead and keep moving on on here what I'll do now is I'll focus on some of this darkness underneath the eye and I'll just kind of like mask some of this in like that the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of go down here I'm going to grab the underside of the nose like that and I'll shape that up a little bit sorry there wasn't any notice on Doing this video was something that was a last minute thought. I hooked up the second monitor to the laptop and um, figured that would be a, a good little intro to this because everybody always sees me working with the vinyl mask and they wonder what the hell is he doing. But anyways, uh, this is what we're going to be doing here now is we're going to take this object on the left eye. And this over here now, you could think, well, wh why don't we just mirror the left eye to the right eye? Now, in some cases, you could start like that. Um, but I'm just going to redraw it. I think the quickest way you can blow a likeness is to assume that the left eye is going to look identical to the right eye, but just mirrored. Uh, inherently, people have, you know, different lighting on their faces, and uh, shapes are slightly different and skewed, and I guess in the end, that's what makes people look different, because their eyes aren't symmetrical. Okay, I'm going to pull no, that one. Of course. That's Marty Feldman. <laughs> All right. I'm going to take this now and I'm going to trim it out of this. I got two objects selected. It's going to leave the rem remnants of what was left where the circle was overlapped. Now I'm not going to worry about the the black in the eye. I'm going to dot that all in. Now you can tell right now by looking at this some information. You can start gathering, you know, and also the thing when I, before I go on to that is the nice thing about working like this is you really familiarize yourself with the object and uh, it, it gives you kind of a little bit of a, a game plan uh, when you're working on this scale or looking at the, the values. And you can see that that's going to be good enough. I'm not going to be airbrushing this in like a stencil and saying, that, that's it. Uh, you know, it's going to be actually rendered and uh, I'm just using this as a guide. I'm just going to take my airbrush and kind of lightly go over everything. Uh, just so a, a quick placement. I don't have to use any pencils on the surface. Probably just be able to go ahead and uh, freehand this all in once I have this rough layout done. Now, again, I mentioned earlier that one of the biggest pluses is if I ever do this paint job again, um, it's going to be pretty easy for me to just uh, do what I need to do. 
um, I can just hit the cut and uh, I'll be done. People, I me, me, me and Scotty actually do it quite a bit and uh, we exchange files, trade files. I got something he needs, he calls me, vice versa. And I do that with quite a few guys. Um, we have like our own little file network uh, between all of us. It's kind of cool. All right, so I'm gonna bring the mouth up. And you can actually really see um, the way that this contrast adjustment and auto trace manipulate and, and deviate from really what you think you see or what's there. Um, for example, I think that <laughs> the teeth weren't exactly traced all that well. So <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and just get rid of that section there. I'm going to get rid of all this because I already have that. And then I'll, I'll treat the teeth as a separate, separate little entity. And all I'm going to do here is just draw a little quick arc around here. You know, I've done a lot of this with the Wacom pad too in the past, but you know, for something about the Wacom, it's already become so quickly outdated and I think once I got my hands on the iPad I was just like nah and now they do have um, Illustrator available on the iPad um, and I did grab another vector program and I might throw Illustrator on my iPad so I do have a, a little bit more complex source for vector graphic design um, but it's easy enough for me to grab my stinking laptop and do what I need to do too so Remember, this is just a quick reference. I'm not going to draw uh, too crazy here. I'm going to start, stop, start, stop. The teeth, though, you know, probably one of those items because they're very rigid as far as the shape, the form. Uh, it might not be a bad idea to study the teeth on this particular image and make it work as far as... Uh, Something you can come back in, counter mask, remask, uh, to make them pop out of the mouth. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm just going to kind of clean them up a little bit. I don't know how many times Pinhead has visited the orthodontist, but uh, I'm going to give him a decent set of choppers. Figured somebody with that many pins in his head at least deserves that. Moving that, moving that, moving that. Alright, now I'm going to take this, combine these two elements, that line, and I'm just going to drag the nodes together and come over to this other side. Do the same thing. Put that node right in there. Okay, alright, it's on there. It's harder to see on my laptop than it is on that monitor. It's actually pretty decent there. All right, so there it is. I think I've got the head pretty well resourced as far as the uh, elements that I need. Uh, the one last thing that I think I should focus on is the perimeter around the head and also uh, coming off the shoulders and down to the neck. So I'm going to take all this stuff here and I'm just gonna group it, just so it stays together. And I'm gonna hit the group. Now there's a difference between grouping and combining, and one of the things that in Corel Draw people get confused about those two. But grouping is basically encompassing a subset of elements. Some of those elements could be combined, like all of our needles that we have on the image. They are combined, so it's treating this all as one, but the grouping allows you to basically uh, group, put these things all together in one package so you can move them and then ungroup them and then uh, do whatever you want to do to them that also. And inside the grouping in CorelDRAW, you can also do a, a control select and also grab a particular element of that group set and move that around. So there's a couple ways to actually still get around that whole grouping thing. So I'm gonna zoom back in 
on this here. This is going to be really fast and furious. I'm just going to go ahead and draw the curve. The ears kind of, kind of almost a semicircle. I'll make the changes on that, and then I'm going to go down to the head, and then I'm going to go up and connect that all the way to the top. So basically, I've got half of the head kind of uh, taken out and just kind of traced, and then I'll show you why I do that. But I'm going to go ahead do whatever changes here I want to do. Now there's going to be a lot of little subtle deviations to the surface just because of the nature of this makeup. Uh, there's going to be some bumps and valleys and stuff I think will make it look a little bit more natural. So, And also cue me up a little bit when I go back in to do some of the freehand airbrushing. And I'm just going to create some little irregular surfaces, little indentations like that. And then we're going to go down to the ear. I'm going to grab my node edit tool or my shape tool and just bring this stuff around. Now you can grab the arrows, you can grab the line, you can grab the nodes. Many ways to manipulate these shapes as you're working. And I'm going to go ahead and bring that down there. When I first started doing this, I did this before Windows was out, and um, it was really quite challenging doing this in a DOS environment in AutoCAD. And uh, that would have been 1986, 87, when I first got my first shitty aisle line plotter that was a heat tip plotter that was basically an architectural pen plotter. And uh, somebody thought it was a great idea to stick a soldering iron in the other end and call it a vinyl plotter. Well, it wasn't the cleanest vinyl plot. It was basically melting its way around the surface. It was very slow as you watched it just kind of melt away uh, the vinyl. But that was how it kind of all started for me in uh, working for a company doing fleet vans back in Erie, Pennsylvania when I worked at a business called Art Attack Graphics with my partner, Tom Cataldi. And, uh, you know, it was life-saving then. It was a very expensive adventure at that point in time. I think we spent maybe three, $4,000 for the shitty computer that we had. It barely, I don't even think it had 100 megs of RAM on it. And then um, the plotter was another few thousand dollars. It was even, it was like, it was probably twice the amount I paid for my uh, any of the plot plotters I had, but even the Roland, I think, was like 1500 1600 when I purchased it 15, 25 years ago. No, it's been 20 years now that I've been running the Roland. We had Suma Cut for a while, had a Gerber. Gerber was ridiculous. Gerber was uh, $100 a font to have any changes in your fonts. That got to be really expensive. There was no computer controlling it. It was a console-based unit. But now it's so inexpensive to get into this, and I just kind of have to laugh when people complain about spending $1,600 on a plotter when it'll pay for itself. I can throw you a couple of jobs that would pay for itself in the first week on it. So if you have any doubt that um, plotter as an investment is questionable, I really would almost say it's money back guaranteed and within a month, depending on your workload and how busy you are. So getting back to this. Okay, so all I did was I took the left side, I mirrored it, flipped it over, slid it over to position. Now I have the full uh, head traced out. And I'm pretty happy with that. One thing I could do is just draw simple lines down through here and peel these off in sections that I do them. And it might not be a bad idea, and I'll show you how to do that, do that too, since this is going so fast. I know a lot of people, it's probably dinner time back home on the East Coast, and uh, it's only 3.30 here. It might even give me a chance to cut this mask out, get this all laid up, and, uh, and maybe even start airbrushing today, but we'll see. I'm not going to make any promises. No promises. Glad to hear, uh, glad to see that you guys are here. Appreciate it. So this stuff here, we're still trying to figure out 
the best way to do this. I'm not the guy who, who says a month in advance, hey, I'm doing a, a video on this date at this time. I can't do that with my life. I just can't do it. So You can't even do it a day in advance. Well, even a day in advance <laughs> might be kind of nice. But I don't even know if I can do that sometimes because I get so many different things going on at any given time and, and it just gets frustrating to be kind of tied down to a commitment on a schedule. One of the things I do like about being self-employed is to have the uh, flexibility to do meet the needs and the demands that come before me. And, uh, you know, I don't like to let people down. If I can't do a damn video, I can't do a damn video. So. All right, so there's a couple overlaps in here. I'll show you how to get rid of these. Now, these lines I just drew aren't single paths. I'm just going to go in here and get this line segmentation tool and pop out these overlaps so I can grab these pins and needles uh, individually where these items are crossed over with this perimeter along the jawline here and the coat area. The virtual segment tool, boom, didn't want to do that, but when I come back in here, zoom in a little tighter maybe. All right. So, there we have it. That's pretty much it in a nutshell. Let's take this aside, pull this image out of there, and you can kind of see what we're left behind with here. Now that's it. That's all I'm really going to start with on this particular image. Um, and thanks, Scotty, for pointing out the, the needle on the nose. And I'll be sure that, I think I already got it there, but I was uncertain if it was going to stay there. But this is good enough. And a lot of this stuff here, I can save these things all together, like I was telling you, let's, let's go back up to view normal, and let's go enhance. So I can take all these needles now, I can turn them all black, and you can see that's the element of all that right there. I can take all this other stuff I can do, turn black, and then the nose isn't going to be turning black. So and That's basically what I'm going to be working with on this particular mask. So. I hope that half hour or whatever it was that uh, we got into this helps out. What do we have? 30 minutes maybe into this? I really didn't really pay attention, but we'll put it up on YouTube and log it so that it's available to uh, watch anytime you need. I'll yep. also link it somewhere on the website. And... Can you can you export from yes, Facebook? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. But we are going to be yeah. doing some live feeds. Maybe when we do the airbrushing, we'll do some live on this tomorrow. Um, I'm going to get the mask cut. I'm going to get them set up and get everything ready so tomorrow we can do a live feed in the morning and airbrush the hell out of this thing. And um, you guys can see how to use the mask, how to peel out, making decisions as to what gets peeled out first, where do you start, what do you leave on, all that fun shit. So um, let's do this though before we, we wrap it up. I'm just going to control Z to get back. Okay, so now we talked about this earlier. This is kind of a cool little feature. I'm going to go back out to wireframe mode. And I'm going to hit Alt Z, which is basically going to create a snap. And what it's going to do is it's going to snap my line. See how it's wanting to put it into position. Right there it's telling me that it's going to go to a node. It would go to an edge, a midpoint on that line. It's a very intuitive program and has a lot of power. So this is, I'm going to start here. All I'm doing is click, stop, click, stop, click, stop, click, stop, click, stop, click, stop. I'm going to do that all the way around here. So I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to develop a grid system based upon the placement of the pins. Then you can see I'm starting to get it all together there. It's coming together, man. Hope everybody's avoiding the COVID. My neighbors uh, are down with it right now. My immediate next door neighbors. And their cat likes to come over and hang out with me. So I've had to like keep, keep the cat out of the shop. My last thing we want is COVID for the holidays. So hope everybody's staying safe out there. All right, so you can see how this is kind of working out here. 
and I'm mapping it out based upon the placement of the pins. And now I'm going to start to do the lateral lines. And I don't necessarily have to do all of them. You know, do as much as you feel like. And what I'm doing is just simply not drawing over top of these spikes where they overlap the line. I'm just drawing into them and continuing on. So tomorrow when I start to do this, I can peel out these sections to kind of map out the, the deep cracks in the surface of this uh, image. Bring this one to here. And then bring that to that edge. Bring up to that. You guys will be sick of my music after a while, but uh, I've been listening to a lot more music these days than AM radio. I've been using a lot of the Pandora. And uh, strangely, I think I mentioned it last week in a post uh, Testament. I discovered Testament. I mean, I've heard them before. Never really paid that much attention. Quite honestly, I wasn't really a huge thrash metal guy. I know, hard to believe, right? But um, I just, I don't know. Wasn't ever really into it. Metallica, Megadeth, um, I don't know. Slayer kind of turned me off. And then I started to think that all these bands sounded like Slayer after a while. But... Uh, Testament actually is a quite talented band. Uh, instrumentally, it's really good stuff. So I've been listening a lot of that. King Diamond. I think I'll listen to a lot of King Diamond um, at some point during this paint job, which means I won't be able to Delawise unless they call up King Diamond, which I know is a bass player. I could call him up and say, hey man, could you get the King to give me permission? <laughs> <laughs> Diana would hate that because she doesn't like King Diamond, but um, she's not painting, so. Right. All right. And the last one I'm going to do here, probably just going across the forehead. And I'm just going to quickly run these ones down the face here. Sometimes the snaps is nice, other times they're a pain in the ass. You just need to know when to turn them off and when to use them. When to hold them and when, when to fold hold them. Up. When to hold up and fold up. That's right. So I'm going to turn them off right now. And I'm just going to quickly come down here and put these lines. Now I'm not worried about how the ends connect. Like I said, these are gonna be just used for a rough guide tomorrow when we start airbrushing, so. All right. And I think I'm gonna kind of roll with this and mask this out, cut the plotter. Actually get the plotter to do the cutting, so. Let me do this, zoom back out. Take a look at this image, pull this across, and you guys can once again see what is going to be cut. There it is. Ta da! Pretty cool. Yeah. So that didn't take that long. And I have to ask you how long would that have taken you to hand cut? Or even setting up the damn overhead projector just to get that happen. And it would take you probably half the time that it took me to actually draw it. So, that again, the thing I really want to emphasize is that. If I had to do pinhead again, or if Scott McKay calls me up and says, Hey, Mike, do you still have that pinhead file? Then I have that file. You know, Nub, Nub has my fingerprints. He, we have a couple of, we've shared vectors throughout the years. So that's kind of a nice thing. I did this, blah, blah, blah. It's done. You can always do it again. So I'm going to go ahead and cut the vinyl. We're going to wrap this video up for the day, and uh, we'll see you guys tomorrow morning.